All right, today we're gonna get the let out by talking about Kashmir, one of the great rock songs, one of the great songs, period, of all time. And we're gonna use it and then the opening main riff as an example of a practical use of the chromatic scale. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about polymeters and also just kind of how just the vibe of a song and songwriting components can kind of mesh together to tell a story, right? Uh, so if you haven't heard it, the main part sounds like this. <laughs> And so on and so forth, right? So uh, first things first, this is in a different tuning. It's called Dad Gad. So what you do is you drop the low E string down to a D and the B string down to an A and the high E string down to another D. Now for the purposes of this first part that we're gonna do, you just need to do it in drop D because we're not gonna use the, the high of two strings, right? Uh, and again, this is just kind of like a breakdown of just one part of the riff. If you wanna learn the whole song, I will link you to an accurate tab if you wanna check that out. But basically we're just gonna talk about this right here. Now, uh, again, fantastic song, and uh, we're gonna talk about the chromatic scale for a second. Now, I remember when I first learned about the chromatic scale, I was like, this seems totally useless. I don't even know why this is a thing. Basically, all it is, is a scale that consists of every single of the 12 notes that we use, right? So like, if you were to play just the A string, go A, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, that's the chromatic scale, right? Uh, like something like the major scale would have intervals where there's spaces between those, like whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, so on and so forth. That makes a little more sense. I never really understood why the chromatic scale was even really a thing. But this is a good example of something like that, right? So uh, what we're doing is we have a droning note or a pedal and it's in D, right? So the D string, the low E string is now a D. We kind of keep going back and forth to this. We start out with this chord. Right, and uh, we kind of keep going back and forth between these different notes. In fact, uh, we'll, we'll make one shape. So this first shape, I've got my pinky on the fifth fret of the A string, which is a D note. I'm uh, opening up the open D string, which is another D note. And then I'm getting my pointer finger on the second fret of the G string, which is an A. So really, if I played the, the lowest four strings, I'd have a D, another D, another D, and an A. Now, uh, if you know like your scales and stuff like that, the fifth of D is A. So really, this is just kind of one big power chord, right? In case it's like a power chord like this, but just a bigger, fuller sounding one, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep all these three D notes, and we're gonna scoot the one on top, the note on top, the melody, I guess if you wanna think of it. We're gonna scoot it up one note, at a time until we get to the fifth fret, right? So all we're doing is we're doing the same shape. We have the second fret first. D, drone that D, which we just kind of hit it and let it go. And then we're gonna move this higher, one fret higher. Now this is a uh, A sharp, right? One higher, so now it's a B. And notice how I'm kind of changing my hand shape. I'm not going like that. As I kind of get higher, we're just climbing. This The highest note on top is just going from two to three to four to five. Now what this is doing is because we have so many other D notes present, we're kind of making our way towards something in a chromatic run, chromatic one note at a time. So because we're hearing so much of the D note, it seems like we're going somewhere, right? Because so much of the tonal center is on this D note and we're climbing. So we're climbing from an A to an A sharp to a B to a C. It's leading the ear to this D note, right? Because it wants to kind of like resolve there. This note wants to get with all the other D notes to kind of make a more cohesive. And that's kind of where it takes us. But the genius of this song is that it's kind of like a never ending cycle. And what it does is it leads your ear there. So we have the A to the A sharp, to the B, to the C, 
And as soon as it gives you that one note right there to kind of put everything where it feels like it's going, it switches back to the A. So as you can kind of see that first time through, everything kind of got like two counts. If we're counting in three, which we'll get more to time signatures in a second. But if it's like one, two, three, like three hits, and then there's another one, right? By the time we get to the D down here, we switch and we kind of cut that in half. So we only, we're only on there for a second. And that's what kind of brings us to like, just the endless cycle of this chromatic scale ascension that kind of starts over and over again and kind of takes you on like a ride. Like it's like a never ending type thing, right? So that can, that's gonna bring us to the time signature of this. Now, Zeppelin is such a great band because a lot of the stuff they do, sometimes they'll experiment with time signatures and especially Bonham, who's like one of the greatest drummers of all time, uh, plays a big part in all that. And if we were to count this, uh, the easiest way to count it in guitar counting would be in six or two of three, right? So it'd be like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you think that it would be in six, right? Now, one of the genius things uh, that John Bonham does is he's playing what's called a polymeter, where you have two different types of signatures happening at the same time. So the guitar is playing in six, and the drums are playing in four. Like, if you listen to the drums, it's like... One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you can actually, uh, I'm gonna loop just that beat. One, two, three, four, Now we can play six over four, and it sounds like this. And it kind of creates even more of like a never ending cycle because every now and then the dynamics, the downbeats, the accents are lining up in different things that kind of mesh together eventually. So it's like a cool thing to kind of like experiment with uh, different time signatures kind of going on at the same time. I believe, like I said, this is called a polymeter because there's like multiple meters. One of them's in four, four, one of them's in, you know, six, eight, however you want to count it. But also too, a bigger point on that is just kind of like how Zeppelin was such a great band to kind of like all their songwritings and all four guys being on the same page, kind of like telling a story and creating an atmosphere with their music. And if you listen to like interviews or like read interviews of like Robert Plant and Jimmy Page talking about the song Kashmir, it's about when they were like taking like a road trip through, I think it was like Morocco or something like that. And they were just on this like endless road through the desert. Uh, and there's like, it's like everything looks the same, like as far as the eye can see. And it's just kind of like the, the majesty and the beauty of just endlessness. And when you listen to the song, and you kind of see the, the cyclical nature of how the guitar is working and how it's going six over four kind of like with the drums and stuff like that. It does give you like a feeling of just like majesty and like power, which again, one of the reasons I think Zeppelin is one of the greatest bands ever is because they kind of emote just raw power in their playing without necessarily having the use of a lot of distortion. Like even like this guitar tone right here, it's probably more distorted than the one that Jimmy Page is using. I mean, it's really just more about the songwriting that gives it the power, even though, you know, he has like such a signature Marshall song too. So I think really Cashmere is just a fantastic song. It's a great example of how you can use the chromatic scale to lead you somewhere. Because again, like the, the notes in the chromatic scale, like there's no scale, like no, like the key of C, key of D, whatever, that has all those notes in it. Usually there are spaces that break those up. So it's just an interesting thing, thing, interesting thing for maybe your own songwriting and to kind of use just kind of those incremental ways to nudge yourself through a scale and lead a song somewhere and then you can have it resolve if you want or have it not resolve like this song does to kind of take you somewhere. Side note, I remember when I was in college, I was friends with this guy who was a drummer in like a punk band and he was like a filthy drummer and he was like definitely in like the anti-Zeppelin group and I like never understood why and we were having a conversation about it once and he was like, it just must be so boring to be John Bonham playing in that band. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like you have no idea what you're talking about. And then we talked about Kashmir and he's like, it's just the ultimate song that is like such a huge buildup and there's never any payoff. 
And that was like his complaint, which I kind of understood, but I think the whole point is that it is like a build up without any payoff. And it's just like this, this is, I, I, majesty is the word. So again, Cashmere, one of my all time favorite songs. Definitely, I hope you learned something from the lesson. And if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments or Instagram or Twitter. And until next time, I'll see you then.